To say you gotta know somebody Or know somebody To get somewhere these days To say you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright with me Yeah, you know that's alright Yeah, that's alright Cause you know that's alright I'm not trying to make that point I'm trying to say that the local community banks are not out of business because the point I'm trying to make is they never change their lending limits. That's it. That's all I'm trying to say. And the, the big banks did, and that's why most of them, and I'm buying loans from them now. I'm buying loans at eight, two and six cents on the dollar. But if I go to my community banks, they really don't have that many bad loans because they didn't change their lending limits. But when you go in there, interview the bank, What's your loan to value? 90? Is it 80? Is it 75? Is it 70? Is it 65? You need to know what, how much money you're getting out of the deal. Okay? What type of borrower are you? What do you need to be? Do you need 700, 720 credit scores? Do you need a certain amount of money in the bank? I like to interview the bank and then go to the loan two or three months, go get the loan two or three months later. So I walk in there prepared. Um, how much money do I need to have in the deal? Some hard money lenders you need to have, what's your criteria? Do you need to have any money in the deal? Usually they come to the table with 15 to 20 percent. You need to have 15 to 20, so that's good to know. If you're going to do a hard money loan with this gentleman, you need to know that you're going to have to come with 15 or 20 percent in the deal. It's good to know, right? Does this make sense in interviewing you to make sure you know what your yeah, criteria is? I wish guys would show up with that information, that'd be great. What's that? I wish guys would show up their financial information and have all that. Yeah, don't you wish it? But yeah, when that guy does show up, doesn't he look good? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Right. So my point is, when you go to the banks, go with your information, you look a lot better. When you leave the bank and it takes three weeks or a month or a month and a half to put it together, it doesn't look too good on the end, does it? Now, go prepare. Okay. And talking about taking money from me, not from me, from uh, me borrowing money from uh, my investors, okay? This is what investors want to know if they're going to lend you money. This is what they're looking for. Okay. You want to move over here so you can see? You okay. okay. So, who they're investing with? They want to know who you are, what your background is, how many deals you've done. Educate them about yourself. Okay. I want my investors to know everything about me. What type of person I am, who I hang with, what kind of deals I do. I want the more I educate them, the more money they're going to lend me. This is what I've learned over the years. Okay. What's the plan? Okay. What is my game plan with the money that I'm taking from them? Is it a duplex, triplex, quadruplex? Is it an apartment building? Okay. What's, how long am I going to have their money? Okay. Is it three months, six months, nine months, 12 months? Okay. And then uh, when are they getting their money back and how are they getting their money back? Is it a flip? Are you going to hold it? Are you going to go to the bank? Let them know everything. Educate them about the timeline, what you're doing with their money. This is what they how are they getting their money back? It's the hardest thing. It's easy to borrow money. It's easy for them to lend you money. The hardest thing is paying them back usually. And if you can educate them, and if it doesn't have to be, you know, if I used to say six months. I used to take money in the beginning at six months. But that put a lot of pressure on me. So you buy the property, you got to gut it, you got to start rehabbing it. If things go wrong with contractors. You're into the fourth month. Oh man, I'm starting to sweat. I got to pay this guy back. In, in six months, I got two months to go. You got a list of property right now. It could take a, a month, two months, three months to sell property for the people to get a loan for your deal. So I always do a one year note. It's always one year. If I know I'm giving the money back in three months, I make that note for one year. I always make it for one year. And I've taken, I've let my investor know that I am going to have their money for at least a year. So what are your terms? Six months? Nine to 12 months. That's good. Nine to 12 months, that's good. Is there points after six or? Mm -hmm. No, I'm trying to help you out here. I guess. Yeah, that would be my question. <laughs> so this is the things that they're this is the things that they're um, they're looking for. Jeremy, quick. Let me just have one of the a private investor put up money. He had something to say. I'll do it for a year. If you want to extend it another year, yeah. just pay me one point over another year. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty neat because you're saying when you're sweating at that yeah. at that 12 month mark, or whatever, you know, six month mark. You know, if you're new, and I'm yeah, I'm not going to beat you up too bad. I let it be up at all. It's just, it is what it is. We're trying not to pay points. I have never, ever paid points since I started in this business. Ever. Because I've gone to private investors. Even private investors go, I'll lend you money at 12 and 1. No, you're not the guy for me. No, it's too much money. 10%, two points. I'm not doing it. That's why you have to learn how to raise capital so you can save money. 
your interest rates. Now, look, every deal is different, so whether you're making forty or fifty thousand dollars on a deal. I'm not saying not to take the money. If you have to start out with a great card money lender like this guy is, I would think that he is. He sounds professional. He sounds like he knows what he's doing. But it's really our objectives that we get um, more into the business. We don't want to really want to pay those two and three points. But people get mad at hard money lenders. Um, but there's a cost to their money too. They have to make money. So they might borrow on money at six, seven, eight. They got to lend it out at 10, 12, 14. If I was a hard money lender and I am going to start doing hard money, I'm charging 14 and four. I don't care whether you borrow the money from me or not. It doesn't really matter to me. But that's what I'm going to be charging. And I probably might not do much business, but we'll see how it works out. But that's why you're not going to want to come to me. So question, what are some good, what are good terms for you? What, what would you consider good terms for my hard money lender or? Uh, what are your terms? 14 and 4. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to help them out. I just need the shit out of them. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. I mean, look, in California, they're 9 and 10 and they're 7 and 3 and 2. But their deals are a lot more expensive out in California. I really think the hard money, the, the, man, that's hard, love it. But I really think it's like 12 and 13 and 2 and 3. But what I'm going to go back to is you got to get your deal done. If you can't find the money, if the money works at those prices, then the money works, right? Make some money on that deal and put more money into the next deal so you take less money from that most expensive hard money guy I've ever heard in my entire life in this room. No, it's not. I mean, that's a little high, but it's really 12 and 2, 12 and 3, something like that. They've really come down over the past couple years. They've come down a lot. A great ad, someone says I'm right about something. Um, so this is what this is what a lender is looking for, and this is what you have to explain to them. As we go through this, you're going to learn tonight that I am very, very thorough with my investor. I will not let that person give me a dime until they fully know what they're getting themselves into. All the risk factors. We always want to go. I got this amazing deal. Well, I've heard that from I got this amazing deal. It doesn't always work out so well. But just always think the most important thing if you're going to raise money is to take care of that investor. I started with one person 10 years ago, $35,000. And it's turned into something crazy. But I've always taken care of him. And it went from his next door neighbor to the next door neighbor, which is friends, to a guy, a chiropractor in Florida. And then it just spun off from there. It's all about these things right here for you. I gotta take that seat up there. It's all about this right here. This is the simple stuff. This is what the kind of the theory behind it, the mindset about borrowing money. I'll get into later about how it's done and how you secure a person, but these are really the most important things. It's the relationship that you create with someone. Seven days a week. 24 hours a day, I answer my investor's phone call. And they test me at 10 o'clock at Sunday, and I answer the phone. And they test me at 7 o'clock Saturday night at dinner, and I answer the phone. Midnight Saturday, I answer the phone. 5 o'clock in the morning, I answer the phone. There's nobody more important than my lenders. I have so many people that start lending me money, and they go, well, the guy didn't answer the phone call for three days. I just had a simple question. Gotta answer the phone. Don't sell somebody, okay? People don't, you ever hear that? People don't want to be sold, but they want to buy, right? When you go into a nice store, like your scarf, right? You want to go browse around. You don't want to be sold, but you're there to buy something, right? Just think, these investors need you. These people need to put their money somewhere. And if they can get 8 to 10 percent, they're amazed. That's awesome. They're paying 1 percent right now in the bank. What? If they raised rates or they didn't, but it's less than 1 percent, it's crazy. Not making any money. Right? So if they can get 8 to 10 percent from you, you're doing something amazing for them. They need you. So you need to take care of them. Just show them what you're doing. I sit down at a table and I go, this is the deal doing. This is how I'm going to pay you back. This is what I'm going to pay you. This is what's going on. I'm buying in Florida. I'm buying in Philadelphia. I'm buying in California. We're buying notes. This is the yes. I'm educating somebody and showing them what I do in my life. And it's, if it's not for them, it's okay. But I'll tell you this. When I was young and green 10 years ago, I'd be like, man, that guy didn't give me money. That woman didn't give me money. I'm so mad. Give people time. 
Don't breathe down their neck. They came back six months later when they heard that somebody else in a group let you mine. They came back. I was like, oh man, I can't tell you how many people I sit with. Well, now it's, it's, it's pretty easy for me, but you know, I have people that sit and then they come back. They say no in the beginning. And I say, well, you know what? This isn't for you. You know, some guy called me yesterday and it was awesome, man. He goes, Steve, I gave you my money two months ago. I got my two payments and you know what? I can say that I'm sleeping at night. I can sleep at night. So what I say to people, it's my job to help you sleep at night. If you're not sleeping at night, I will give you your money back. I don't want people to be stressed about their money. That kind of language when you're talking and you're not trying to sell somebody, I got the greatest deal in the world, come on, we gotta do this, we're gonna make a lot of money. It's just, it's just, no, good. It's just no good. Be cool, calm, collect them, show them what you're doing. People want to make what? They wanna make money. And once I have somebody, I never lose them. I never lose them, ever. And it's embarrassing if I do, I did something wrong. At the end of a deal, when I get done a deal, I, I call them, I thank them, I send them brownies, I send them a nice gift. What is that, Harry and David's or something? I sent them like eighty dollar something when I'm with my girl. Harry's. Harry's and David, whatever. Harry's. What's it called? It's Harry's awesome. Days. Harry's and David's. It's, it's Harry's awesome. Days. Eighty bucks. It's incredible. Right? Thank you. And then I call. Them, I go. What could I have done better? Trust me. I know what I do well. I want to know what I could have done better for them. This guy Michael told me I paid him back too early. Right? I paid him back in six months. He goes, I really thought this was a one-year deal. I said, sorry, Mike. I, I think I told you, but you didn't remember. You're 90 years old. I'm sorry. You know, I made a mistake. I blame it on myself. I take accountability. But I know the next deal, i got to put him in a nine-month deal or a one-year deal. i got to make him happy. He wasn't happy, but I know what I did wrong. I don't ask him what I did good. I ask him what I did wrong. That's how we learn. That's how we grow our business. Transparency. Telling you, they all come in, they meet every single employee in my company, they meet my bookkeepers, they meet my partner, they can sit and talk with them, I let them go over financials with them, I let them do whatever they want. I'm not saying you have to go, you're not going to go that far in the beginning because you might not have that much. But it makes them feel good. Don't tell somebody that you never lost money on a deal, because that's a crock. You did 20, 25 deals, eh, maybe you did. Maybe at that point I only lost one or two, but be honest, I lost money on a deal, but this is why I lost money. I made a mistake. I'm telling you, when I first got into it, it was like my third deal down there at Geno State. I listed the property for $315,000. I had a buyer within 24 hours. I'll never forget this deal. Maybe try for nine months. I had a buyer, $5,000 on her asking. I didn't take the deal. I didn't sell the deal for nine months. I lost 20 grand. Day. I was making money, but I was greedy. I was like, this is crazy. I'll give it a week. I'm gonna have they're gonna overbid the property. Nine months. <laughs> I lost like 20 grand. But my lender didn't know it. When I went to the table, I knew there was enough to pay him back. He didn't even know anything. I didn't tell him nothing. I didn't tell him this deal sucks. We're losing money or in trouble. Nothing. But at the table, I had to throw like 10 grand in or something. 15 grand to make the deal work. So he got paid back his money, he got his interest, and he lent me more money on the next deal. Look how important it is, the lender. I got a book here, The Banker's Code, write it down. The Banker's Code by George Anton. It is an easy read, it's a phenomenal book, and it's all about lending, borrowing, the spread of money, arbitrage. I give every single person that I'm looking to borrow money from, I give them this book. Because it's the way I think. I want my lender to get in my, my mind and understand what I want them to do for me and what I'm trying to accomplish. This book is phenomenal. It's leverage, it's arbitrage. It's just like what I do now on my lending side when I'm buying re-performing and non-performing notes. You know, the bank goes to the Fed to borrow money at whatever, one or less, okay? And they're lending it out three, four, five percent, or even ten percent to us. They're making the spread. There's nothing better in the world than creating leverage like that. I love lending money. I love taking my investor's money at eight and getting sixteen on it. All I'm doing is shuffling money around. Phil and I were talking about buying more real estate, and as we were talking about buying more real estate, he's addicted to real estate. But I keep going, Phil, let's be the bank. No roofs. 
lending money. You have money to lend. You can, I, I take money from investors and I lend it out, my IRA. I do both. There's nothing better than being the lender. Don't you love to see the spreads? The four points? Oh, the stress, I agree. Go with me here, I'll go with no, you. No, I'm with you. It's I'm awesome. With you. Yeah. Nothing being better than being the bank. Guess what? No toilets, no roofs, no building inspectors, no refrigerators, no broken windows, the bankers code. Okay? When you sit with somebody, okay, have a pulse. I'm um, thinking about going to this deal and buying it. Do you think you can give me a hundred grand? I think we're gonna make money. What I love about Phil, I saw him speak like six months ago, he had me pumped up, right? I was ready to run out the room. Okay, sit down and have a little bit of pulse about what you're doing, right? Not many people pump me up, but that they have me all pumped up, right? Sit down and go, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm going to do it, this is how I'm going to pay you back, and we're both going to make a good, we're both, we're both, we're both going to make a good return on our money. And we're going to do this. And we're going to be successful at it. And give them the plan. Go in with a pulse. Energy is it. Energy, 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 energy is it. Where does the money come from? Well, this is where it comes for, for me. Self-directed IRAs. That number is probably up to 60 to 70% now. The money that I raise is from self-directed IRAs. I was talking to these gentlemen over here earlier. It is so powerful. I'm going to talk about self-directed IRAs in a minute. But if you're in this room and you're going to be in real estate and you're going to borrow money or you're going to lend your retirement, you better go check out Camel Plan. Carl Fisher is one of my best friends. I don't even think of any other company out there. Equity Trust is a complete pain in my butt. Um, Camel Plan just makes it really easy. And Carl, I'll give him a play. I don't get kickbacks from anybody. I don't take kickbacks. Maybe I should, but I don't. But I love Carl Fisher. I love Camel Plan. But think about this. How old are you? All right. If I borrow $100,000 from this gentleman and he's got $100,000 in his IRA and it's Camel Plan, and I do everything right, I do everything I say I'm going to do, when do I have, when am I going to give him his money back? When is he going to want his money back? IRA money. Nope. Nope. 70. 70, cheater, I told you earlier. But 70, he's not going to need his money back until he's 70 because I know he's going to be successful and I know he's probably not going to need it at 59 and a half. Most people don't touch their money at 59 and a half, especially when you find lenders because they have money and they're pretty well off and they're building that retirement. And I'm telling you, it's always left to the kids. But <clears throat> I have his, how old are we at 35? 35 years, I got his money. Do you understand that? Because he can't use his money for anything else. He can't go buy a car with it. I mean, he, can't buy, he can't go buy his home he's gonna live in. Right? He can't go buy a sure house with it unless he's gonna rent it out and never use it. And if you do everything right, then think about it, okay? Do 10% for 35 years on 100 grand. No fees, no stock market, no up and down, not, not worrying about Apple's coming out with a new iPod or what Facebook's doing or thumbs up or thumbs down or anything like that. A consistent return over 35 years. Now most of my investors are in their 50s, okay? But if I take someone that's 55, I got it for 15 years. I just took a guy, okay? This was last year. 69 and a half, he gave me $250,000. This is really cool. At 70 years old, he has to start taking a percentage out of his IRA. Okay? But I was giving him a 10% return. My return to him, my payment to him, was offsetting what he needed to take out every year. So he wasn't taking any money out. Somebody smile. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? This is why you need to know self-directed IRAs. All right, well, that didn't jazz you up, so we'll come back to that in a minute. But I'm going to tell you this. I have about $11 million I've raised, and I have. Um, I'm paying out about between 8 and 10%. So let's just say I'm paying 10% out of $11 million right now. I know the numbers are around $11 million. I just love it. So what am I paying my investors every year? What is that, like 1.1 million? 
What do you think they're going to do with that money when they get it? Buy a boat. <laughs> Say they're 50, 60, 65, 68, 50. Back to me if I did everything right. So you know what? Every January 1st I wake up, I know I got $1.1 million coming to me. That's unbelievable. <laughs> I get $1.1 million every January 1st because I know the interest that I'm paying to them. If I'm doing everything right, who do they want to give it back to? You. They want to give it back to you because you're the one making the money. I do it all the time. In my fund, every time they get the $20,000, they roll 20 grand. And they love it. I said, you know, I go, you, Kevin, that 20 grand you're giving me, you know, that's I already paid you that money. That was money that we already made that I paid you interest on, right? He goes, yeah, man, this is awesome. You know, I don't have to worry about it. It's great. I watch it all. Every time somebody gets twenty thousand dollars, I roll them into the fund. So that's why I just I've been talking about this IRA, IRA. You got to learn. Home equity line of credits. How about this? I had a lady come to me, started working for me. Her husband came, wanted to get involved with me. Uh, lived in Westchester. Had a, uh, I sat down on the couch with him. I said uh, I knew he was in his fifties. I said, How long do you live in your house? He goes, About twenty-seven years. I was like, Yeah, baby, this is awesome. Because I knew he had some equity in there. He yeah, said, "How much? How much do you owe that house?" He was like, "110 grand." I'm like, "Oh man, let's go get a drink. This is a good one, right?" And why was it so good? Because I said, I asked him, "How much money are you making on your equity in your home?" And he looked at me. He was like, "Huh?" I'm like, "Well, how if I make you between 30 and 40 thousand dollars a year on the equity in your home?" It was, sounds good to me. So he went. He went, I set him to Citizens Bank because I knew they had the lowest rates. They were two and three quarters at the time, interest only. Okay? He took a half a million dollar line of credit on his house. Okay? He started out with 300000 with me. I gave him a 12% interest. He was making $27,000 a year, three kids in college. Okay? 